It's day five of our nine day Greek cruise. Welcome to Rhodes. Masters for 10 euro you get a combined ticket of four, four different places so the first place is here the palace of the Grand Masters and then there's the archaeological museum and then there's a decorative art collection and um, the there's a church there's a church for the lady of the castle <laughs> uh, there's four different places uh, for 10 euro so just be, be wary of that because the archaeological museum has its own um, entity uh, so which is six euro which is uh, eight euro actually. That's all six. Oh, you saw six. Yep. Okay, so that is what we did, <laughs> and um, yeah, so we're gonna go explore the area. Apparently, there's 150 rooms here, but there are 20 that are open to the public. And the entrance to the exhibit, I know if you walk into the main court, it's easy to get lost, but you kind of are drawn to the main court. Plus, you have all these statues that are here. But if you actually want the entrance to the exhibit, you have to go back to the ticket booth and there's a set of stairs. You go up the stairs and that takes you into the castle. And that's where we're gonna go now. And it looks like there's a school field trip here because you got kids that are doing exercises and dances and a bunch of stuff. In one of the many rooms of the palace, we stumbled across a replica of the Lacoon and Son sculpture. We saw the original just a few days ago in Rome at the Vatican Museum, and I've added a link to that at the top. Okay, so this is a central panel with the leopard is framed by bands decorated with diamonds, crosses, and isosceles triangles. And central theme dates from the second half of the third century AD. And decorative bands are from the 4th century AD. Here, in this uh, room, in this room you can see them excavating the mosaics. We later learned, interesting enough, that the mosaic tiles are not original to the palace. They were actually placed here, or taken, from the nearby island of Kos, and used to rebuild the palace after it was destroyed in the 1800s. So I'm showing sure you the mosaic, but... I'm going to show you how precisely it was designed. Okay, so that concluded our quick walkthrough of the... The Palace of the Grand Masters. So, um, it took about 30 minutes to walk through it, and it was interesting. Um, it's interesting because they do have some some artifacts, some of the old furniture still there, but what they don't do is tell you what's original and what's a replication. A lot of rooms, I think only 20 are open to the public, but of those 20, there's not much in those rooms, and it's hard to tell if the furniture is staged or replicas or original. Like uh, the light fixtures, most of them have already been replaced with electric and, and, and sort of new age, but there is some furniture in there. Yeah, so it appears like the focus more so is on the mosaics, and we've noticed that a lot of the mosaics were from like the the third century AD. So yeah. it's very interesting to see something so so old. <laughs> yeah, um, some of them, most of them are, are patterns of design. Some of them depict, uh, as you kind of saw, hunting. Some of them depict mm -hmm. uh, Greek gods. But um, it was kind of cool. Again, half hour, we were in there, we were out. Yeah, and um, there's just really one way to go through the whole thing. So they kind of give guide which way to go. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. Mm. Uh, so we're going to move on now to our next stop in Rhodes. Again, kind of mentioned at the beginning, this, the ticket here includes access to the museum. So we're probably going to go check out the museum now. The archaeological museum. Yeah, archaeological, archaeological <laughs> museum. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, continue our, our crew stop here in Rhodes. So there is another section that has kind of artifacts from Rhodes, but there's no photography allowed in there. Right, so right outside the castle, there is a walk along the wall experience um, that would require a ticket. And we did not see that option when inside. So uh, if you want to walk along this wall, you'd have to, it would require a ticket inside the castle. Um, there. 
So we're going to leave the palace now and walk north toward Eli Beach and we shared some of that walk in our previous video on roads and I'll put the link right here at the top. And welcome to Eli Beach on the north side of Rhodes. If you're expecting a nice white sandy beach, I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's all stones and pebbles, but it is crystal clear water, nice blue water, and one of the best beaches in Rhodes. Most famous of this beach is the diving platform that you see here, because from the top, it is so clear you can see all the way to the bottom. There are umbrellas and chairs that you can rent so you don't have to lay on the rocks, but some people lay on the rocks. It is whatever works for you, but it was a nice beach to visit. Definitely worth a trip to. Now I know it looked sunny, but after about an hour, it started to rain. So we packed up our stuff and left the beach and headed back to the old town. But before we did that, we took a quick detour through what I'll call the newer part of Rhodes. So, trying to get back from the beach into the old city. There are no doors back into the old city. There are no gates back inside. So we're basically walking along the wall, which is fascinating by itself. It's really cool, but this has been interesting. Yeah, it feels oh. like you're on a set, really. Like yeah, you feel like you're on a movie set. You feel like you're in Game of Thrones. You feel like you're in something just trying to get inside the kingdom get inside you know assassin's creed i can go on but uh trying to find a gateway in so far no luck okay as we continue um this path to get into the old town uh we're just kind of gathering our thoughts on roads and we originally thought that this would just be like just walking around but there's so much to see really uh, in this ancient city. Don't sleep on roads. There's a lot of stuff to do here. Is that the entrance? It's worth a try. There are makeshift stairs here. What's your Google Maps say? Yeah. Okay, this is it. This is what gate? St. Anthony's, Anthony's Gate. Now, lucky for us, that was uh, the correct gate. Uh, our 20 25 minute detour came to an end. We were able to get back within the walls and into the old town of Rhodes. However, we noticed something strange, and that was none of the shops had any power. Now, at first we didn't really pay attention to it, but we sat down at a restaurant to grab lunch and we noticed. As we were walking down the street, we noticed that, that the power went out in one of the shops and it turns out all of the power went out here in Old Town. Um, so we just came in to grab uh, some food here in this restaurant and only get grilled, grilled food. So, kind of. <laughs> so this is the grilled octopus. And because they don't have any power, it was actually grilled, fire grilled. So it should be really good and authentic. Okay, so I don't recall the actual name of this, uh, but it is lamb with cheese and, it took, and vegetables, um, oven cooked. It did take some time because there's no power. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and dig in. Now I thought I took a picture of the menu so I can tell you what the name of this restaurant is and where it is, but unfortunately I can't find the picture. All I can tell you is that the restaurant is at a street corner and it's very close to the clock tower. So we stayed here a little longer than we wanted to, mainly because they had no power so the food was being cooked by fire. But after this, we ran all the way to the archaeological museum because we had our free ticket from the palace, we wanted to get in there. So now, let's just jump straight to the museum. So in retrospect, it was a mistake to leave the archaeological museum for last in Rhodes. We really didn't know what was in this museum before we got there. We didn't even know once we got there what was in the museum. 
but it was part of our ticket to the Grand Palace. So we figured, hey, let's go check it out. And it was amazing. The sculptures and the art and the relics and artifacts in this museum just blew our mind. And unfortunately, we just didn't have enough time to see it all. There are some great depictions. For example, right here, this head of Helios dates back to the uh, second century BC and it's actually pretty famous. It's been featured in modern pop culture. So there are some great, great things to see in this museum. We highly recommend uh, when you are in Rhodes, you're in port, you're docked in Rhodes, check this museum out top of the line. So as I was saying, our time in Rhodes was coming to an end. Uh, now the ship was docked in Rhodes for I believe eight hours. So that gave us seven hours to spend in port in the town of Rhodes, which really was not enough time. I think we didn't uh, get to the museum until we were probably around six hours and 15, six hours and 20 minutes into the trip. So we had to rush through that entire museum in a half hour and then leave 15 minutes to make it back to the ship. Uh, so we did make it back. This is us actually right now trying to quickly walk through the market, through the streets and get back to our ship. Um, it did not leave enough time for uh, any souvenirs or any browsing of shops and stuff like that. And there were some pretty cool things that we saw as we walked along the along the streets back to the back to the port. So I wish we did have more time. So this is why I say in the end, uh, looking back, Rhodes was probably our most favorite stop in Greece. A lot to do, a lot to see. We probably could have easily spent another three to four hours in Rhodes and not be bored or, or, or lack things to do. So this is going to wrap up our trip to Rhodes. Uh, next up is going to be world famous Santorini. Um, and we're going to have that video up in about a week. And we thank you for watching and subscribe for more videos, like this video, comment on this video, let us know what you thought and we'll continue making videos. Thank you.